Hello, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art, and I welcome you to part two of the Baby Jaguar tutorial. Part one is linked down below if you missed it, but guys, let's get started. So jumping straight in, we're going to work on the nose. I'll mix up the colors Permanent Red, Raw Sienna, and a little bit of white. That's Permanent Red, Raw Sienna, and a little bit of white using my size 1 round brush. We'll paint within our black outline and then around that little indent that comes from the bottom of the nose. Next, I'm going to grab my size 6 flat brush and I'm going to use the same color with a little bit more red, that's permanent red, to fill in the ear. I'm going to work on the left side of the inner ear first and then on the right side and lower part I'm going to add a little bit of black into this red and blend that in on my canvas. Now it's up to you, you can actually mix up uh, your red mixture with some of this black on your paint palette and then just apply it. Or you can do what I did where I just pulled in a tiny bit of black and I'm just blending that into the red that's already on my canvas on the inner right ear. Now there's a little bit of brown that I want to bring up higher on the left side of the nose. I'll mix up yellow ochre and raw sienna for this, still using my flat brush. I'll actually just use the corner edge and flat part of my flat brush just to pull that brown up a little bit higher, but still allowing us to see that vibrant highlight on top of the nose on the left side. Alright, great. So now we have most of our medium, our dark values, and some of our light values. Let's go even lighter. I'll still use my flat brush. I'm mixing up yellow ochre and lots of white. This will be a lighter yellow than any that we've used so far. And so right now, we're looking for all the areas that almost look white. They're like a very light yellow on our baby jaguar. Now I'm going to continue using my flat brush because I want to get around the markings carefully but I also want to create a more defined fur over top the right ear. Thank you. 
Now here what I'm doing is I'm clustering lines using the flat edge of my flat brush over top the medium and light gray areas. But the only thing is my red on the inner ear was still wet. So I'd recommend if yours is still wet that you give it a second to dry because as you can see, this is what can happen. Give it a second to dry so that then you can cluster this color over top the red area just like we see in the reference photo. Now oftentimes when we add our highlights, we can see where we need some more medium and dark values. And that's what happened around the chin. I noticed that I needed some more raw sienna and I actually added it into my yellow ochre and white mixture because I needed it just slightly lighter than the color that we already have on the chin. So that's raw sienna, yellow ochre and white. And I just darkened that chin area up, giving it more of a medium value. Now something else I noticed is over top the nose and around the snout it looks a little more gray and I decided to make a brownish gray using a little bit of black, white, and raw sienna. That's a very small amount of black, white, and raw sienna. Very small amount. We don't want to add too much white that it's a light gray over top the nose. We actually want it just slightly, very much a shade darker than the brown that we've already applied. I'll add this to the very top of the nose and the dark parts around the muzzle, right around where we have those dark markings for the whiskers. All right, time to work on those eyes. This is so much fun. I love working on these eyes. I'm gonna use phalo blue and a little bit of white for the first color, I'm working the right eye. We want this to be a dark to medium blue, and then while it's wet, we can add our darks and our lights into that, just right on our canvas. I'll work around that pupil within the border, the black border that we made, and then I'll go in with a little bit more white, and along the lower right side of the eye, I'll just blend that highlight in. All right, so now on the left eye, I'm gonna make it a violet with our Prisma Violet and white. If you look carefully at a reference photo, this left eye is actually darker than the right one. So we can make this purple a little bit darker in value than the blue that we've just added to the right eye. And But don't make it too dark because we obviously wanna still see that pupil. Now I made my purple just a little too light, so I'm gonna just pick up some Prisma Violet and I will add some in the area by the pupil where it's the darkest and the area to the lower right of this left eye, that'll be the lightest area. So you may even need to add a little bit of white to yours if you made it too dark. Now we have a little white area on the right eye that we need to fill with a light gray and I will mix up a light gray using white with very small amount of black. I'll just fill that in. We can't just leave that white. We actually, I would recommend a light gray for that area. And I'll still use that light gray for the bright highlight below the left eye, in between those two black lines around the border of the eye. Now what I'll do is I'll just touch up the pupil and the inside parts of the eye with my black and then I'll go back to that light gray that we were using and that's the color I'll use to pull the highlights in to both eyes. On the right eye we have this long, almost looks like a shooting star highlight on the right eye right over top the pupil and then a tiny little dot next to the pupil on the left eye. 
Now I'm going to move to my size 1 round brush, or you could still use the flat edge of your flat brush if you'd like to. And I'm going to mix up more of my light yellow with white and a little bit of yellow ochre. And I'm going to create the hair going in the other direction over top the medium gray on the right ear. I'm clustering lines, leaving gaps of the medium gray beneath, and also going into the light tan around the bordering this ear as well. And I'm also cutting into this red in the very center. Now to make it look more three-dimensional, I'm going to actually darken up this color so that we can create the fur that's slightly more on the red part of the ear coming into this gray part. And so I added a little bit of black to this color. I'll use this gray to create a little shadow on the lower part of the right ear, right here. Alright, great! So we don't have any more white of our canvas showing, we have all of it covered up. Now it's time to add those accent colors. I'm going to use my fluorescent pink again with white and my yellow ochre. I'll add this to the furthest right side of the neck and I'll still be going in between the markings. Next, I'm going to pull lots of burnt sienna into this color that we were just using. And there's actually some fur that's not getting much light below the neck. And I want to capture that with this color. So add a good amount of burnt sienna. So once I've mixed up that color, I'm going to be pulling that down over some of those markings that connects to that lighter tan color into that brown color. This will lay right over top there. Now on the far right, as I'm moving from the left to right, I'm going to make this a little lighter right here by adding in more yellow ochre. I'm doing that so it connects better with that bright yellowish tan on the right. Now this is what really helps to add contrast to this painting. It's burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and black, which I used to darken up below that strip of fur that we just painted. So I'll go in around my markings, darkening up that area so that it really looks more three-dimensional. You want to have a range of darks, a range of medium values, and a range of light values. And oftentimes when we apply our light values, we can really see where we need to make it darker, or maybe where we need to add more medium values that help join our darks with our light values. All right, so now a sneaky little way to get rid of that line between our yellowish tan and that brown that we made for the fur coming down from the neck, I'll put in little spots with just black along that line. To disguise it, I'll just add some more markings. Next, we're going to wash out our brushes and mix up a light gray. So that's a lot of white, a little bit of black. When I saw that little bit of white on the right part of the neck on the Jaguar, I thought, well, I'll make that a gray, 
but then this gray would also do well if it helped us to combine where the peach color meets the yellowish tan. It's something that was already there within that area, but then I exaggerated it to help me join those two colors. Now I'll also use this light gray to add another layer of hair or fur, kind of both here, on the right ear. So right in front of it, as well as inside of it. But we don't want to go too deep inside because that's where it's supposed to be a darker gray. Now another area we can add this light gray is right around that black area around the mouth. It's like that lower cheek is getting hit with just a little bit more light there. And I think I'm going to bring it up a little bit more along the neck. Okay, so next we're going to work on that left ear, the inner ear hair. Using white and a little bit of black, I'm going to mix up a light gray where I can cluster these long vertical strands of hair. And once again, I'm not covering up all the gray beneath it. And I'm also leaving just a little opening for the inner, very deep inside of the ear. I'm saying vertical, but they are at a slight angle. Now since we're using our grays, I'm going to add in more black into this gray because I see some areas that I want to tone down the light gray on the right ear. I really see there's distinct dark grays to the left of the right ear at the top and on the outside border on the right side of the right ear. Even to this day, after all these years of painting, I still overwork things. So here's a reminder that less is more. You don't have to add tons more paint with each layer that you add. You just want to take your time and be intentional with every single brush stroke that you lay down. If you missed that right there, I added a little bit of gray to the bottom of the fur that's in front of the right ear. And now let's add in some more spots along this area. I mixed up black with some of our burnt sienna and just tiny little spots where the yellowish tan meets our light gray. I'm going to add more markings too, just little ones. All right, so let's wash our brushes thoroughly. We're going to move back to the left side of the body on the bottom. This all goes kind of fast. So if you watch me, I'm going to first start with just burnt sienna. These two colors here look a little too sharp. I need a color that helps join them. So within that rosette and around the markings, I'll do that. Now moving to the left again, I need another joiner color. All right, so next I'm going to pull in some fluorescent pink into this burnt sienna. And then to the left of that, I'll pull in yellow ochre and some fluorescent pink. All right, so I'm looking on that right ear. The red inside of it looks a little too light, especially on the right side of that area because it's such a dark blue in the background. I kind of want to reflect that darkness there too. So I'll darken up using permanent red, a little bit of black, and some white. That's going to be a reddish dark gray. I'll be cutting in around all the fur that we made. And as I move to the left, I'll also add in more permanent red because I don't want to make the entire thing dark. I still want to keep it a vibrant red on the far left part of the inner ear. Now you see how acrylic dries so much darker than what it looks like wet. I really noticed that with this gray. On that left ear we have yet another layer of light gray to add there. So make sure you have a clean damp brush with some light gray. That's with lots of white and a little bit of black. And we just add another layer of our fur there. All 
All right, so let's make another peach color again with our fluorescent pink, yellow ochre, and lots of white this time. We wanna make this a little bit lighter than the one we made before. And I'll add this in a couple places on the left ear, along the back, and as well as along the neck. All right, so now it's time to pull out those rigger brushes or a size one liner brush by Arteza. This is the perfect brush for whiskers. Now take your time, there's no rush here. How I like to paint these is I start at the root on the Jaguar or cat, what have you, and then I'll pull it out and as I'm moving out, I'm relieving pressure off my brush to create that really thin point at the end of that whisker. It's thicker at the base, right at the root, and then the thinnest at the very end of that whisker. Now here's a little tip for painting whiskers. If you have whiskers that are laying over top a light colored background, like ours, on the left side we have a light pink, I recommend a dark gray for your whiskers. And then we have bright white over top the black area around the gums of this cat on the right side. Unless you said something to the viewer that we have two different colored whiskers, they wouldn't notice. It really just works out because we have a bright colored background, dark whiskers on the left side, dark background, light whiskers on the right. Now let's take a break from our Jaguar and work on our background. I give you full permission to be as free as you want with color, design, creativity here. The sky's the limit. I'm using just white to just play with cool designs, circle designs in my background. I add spots that look similar to the rosettes that I have on the Jaguar, and I also add stars. I end up taking out these circles later. But looking at them now, I kind of wish I kept them because it's very interesting and different. I'm going to cluster the stars all over the background over top the purples and the blues and the pinks. These stars are just little dots I'm applying. I'm making some large, some real small, and I'm also going to cluster some closely together and others more spread out. Now I just want to mention here, I do end up covering up those, those circles, those outline circles on the lower right hand side. And what I use is actually more violet, more prisma violet and phthalo blue. And so it adds just a little bit richer indigo in that area. That's what I end up doing later in this tutorial and it's up to you whether you want that or not. But then after that, I also add stars over top that. So it's just a little addition of color in case you want to add that too.
Now I wanted to make it look like the bright stars were shining in the eyes of this baby jaguar. So just using white and the same liner brush, I go over the highlights, and make them real bold on both eyes. So that's when I noticed the nose looked a little too thin in color. So I wanted to add another layer that's permanent red, raw sienna, and a little bit of fluorescent pink. And I just give that a real rich red all over the inside. All right, so the funny thing is I wanted to reapply that indent on the nose as well as go over the spots, but I got so carried away with the spots I ended up going over the ones we've applied and adding in many more. So for that we used, before we used black and burnt sienna and I'll do that again, but make sure that you keep the spots on the bottom part of the body darker with more black and the ones on the top with less black, more burnt sienna. So that's what I'll do. I'll just go over all the spots and rosettes. I'll go from bottom up and you also mustn't forget to do that little indent on the nose if you need to reapply that like I do. So using lots of burnt sienna with not as much black this time, I'm going to add lots more spots to the head. These are smaller ones, not as large as the ones around the neck and back, and they're going to be lighter in color. Oh yeah, and we want to make sure we go over the ones on the head that were there before. Now there's markings around the chin and I forgot those and I ended up painting them at the end. So while we're on the step, don't forget about those. That chin still counts.
right, so here's where I go over my outline circles. I use phthalo blue and white at the beginning. I made that a little too light, and that's why I then moved to phthalo blue, white, and prisma violet to darken that up. So this is where you can add that now if you'd like to, if you haven't already have not, from when I mentioned that before. But then I let that dry for a bit and go over that with more stars. Alright guys, so here until the end is just touch-ups. I repeat a lot of the same things we've already gone over in this part one and part two of this tutorial. The only major things that I've done differently that I haven't gone over is I use black to outline the left side of the lower lip. I bring it up into that open mouth of black. I also use more of our yellow ochre and white to add a stronger bolder highlight on the left side of the nose. I go in with more layers of gray around the neck and as well as more gray strands on both ears. And I add touches of my favorite color ever, Arteza Metallic Gold, to our face here. I add it to the ears, I add it around the face, I add it around the back, just to give it a little bit more sparkle. And with that said, this is the part where I encourage you to make this painting your own Add final touches that really makes it unique to you, maybe different colors, maybe more layers, maybe unique designs. I really just want to encourage you to be as free and creative as possible.
All right, creatives, we have reached the end of our baby jaguar tutorial. I hope this one inspired you, gave you lots of motivation to branch out and create your own original paintings. I really appreciate you taking the time to give this a try. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments down below or share away on the YouTube community group, which is also linked down below. I'm so excited to see your paintings there as well. And have a wonderful day, guys. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.